Welcome to CLJ Notes Channel. Kung hindi ka pa subscribe sa channel natin, paki-click ang subscribe button, paki-like ang ating video, at paki-share na rin sa iba. Napakalaking tulong nito para magpatuloy ang ating pag-upload ng mga PowerPoint video presentation para sa ating mga criminology students. Ngayon, punta tayo sa ratsada, sa ratsada na pag Tingin sa mga halagang prinsipyo sa criminal law 1. So, una, ang definition ng criminal law. So, criminal law is that branch of municipal law which defines crimes, threats of their nature, and provides for their punishment. So, tinatawag siya municipal law, ibig sabihin local law siya. Ibig sabihin, ang application niya ay dito lamang sa ating bansa. Kasi ang bawat bansa ay may sariling municipal criminal law. Ang criminal law ay nagde-define kung ano ang krimen. Ibig sabihin, sinasabi niya kung ano ang acts or omissions na crime. Treats of their nature, sinasaad niya kung anong klaseng krimen ito. Crime against person, crimes against <coughs> property or crimes against honor, etc. And then, provides for their punishment. Kasi nga, isang reason bakit may batas criminal ay para mapigilan ang mga masasamang tao na gumawa ng mga bagay na makakasama sa kapwa at sa estado. So, kung walang parusa, sino ang <coughs> magdadalawang isip na gumawa ng krimen? So, deterrence. Okay? Ang deterrence na function ng criminal law ay nakakamit sa pagmagitan ng punishment. So, ang punishment ay dapat commensurate doon sa klase ng krimen na ginawa o Tama lang sa klase ng krimen na ginawa. Criminal law is substantive. So, substantive siya because it defines the state's right to inflict punishment and liability of the offenders. So, kapag ang isang batas ay sinasabing substantive, ito ay napatungkol sa karapatan ng estado na mag-inflict ng punishment and then it also implies liability of offenders or it defines rights and obligations. So, substantive law yan. Kapag ito ay patungkol sa procedure, ang tawag natin dyan ay remedial law or procedural law. So, <clears throat> hindi siya substantive law. Public law because it deals with the relation of the individual with the state. So, public law siya. It regulates the relation of the individual with the state. Private law, kapag ang nereregulate niya ay yung relation ng individuals among other individuals or between other in individuals. Yung prinsipyo ng common law crimes, <clears throat> ito yung body of principles, usages and rules of action which do not rest for their authority upon any express or positive declaration of the will of legislature. Ibig sabihin, walang isinibatas na bagay patungkol dito pero dahil ito ay nakagawian na tradition, way of life, so, ito ay part ng criminal law. Sa Pilipinas, hindi natin sinusunod ang common law principle kasi ang sa atin, ang sinusunod natin ay yung legality ng criminal provisions. Ibig sabihin, nagiging krimen lamang ang isang bagay kapag may batas na <coughs> ginawa patungkol sa pagpaparusa, pagde-define ng bagay na yon at pagpaparusa nito. Yun yung sinasabi nating nulum krimen Pina sinilehe. There is no crime if there is no law punishing the act as a criminal act. Crime is an act committed or omitted in violation of a public law forbidding or commanding it. So, ang crime either is omission or commission. So, pag may inuutos na gawin, hindi mo ginawa, omission yun. Kapag may inutos na wagawin at ginawa mo, crime of commission. Bago pa man dumating ang mga Spaniards sa Pilipinas, meron na tayong primitive criminal law na tinatawag nating Code of Calanchao. Ito yung first penal law in the history of the Philippines. So, pinaparusahan yung mga killing, stealing, assaulting, and so on. And then, noong July 14, 1876, yung Spanish Royal Decree of 1870 ay ipinatupad sa batas. So, naging extension ang Pilipinas ng application ng 
Spanish Royal Decree of 1870 kasi under the uh, during the time under tayo sa Spain colonized by Spain 300 years tayo na colonized ng Spain Si Rafael Delfan ay isang Pilipino na unang nag-isip ng naggumawa ng correctional code pero yung kanyang ginawa ay hindi na isa batas Instead, <clears throat> nagkaroon ng committee na inorganize na pinangunahan ni Anecleto Diaz. Ito yung committee na ito ni Anecleto Diaz gumawa ng <clears throat> draft ng penal code based doon sa Spanish Código Penal or Spanish Penal Code and then ito ay na tapos noong December 8, 1930 at nagkaroon ng dalawang taong palugit para maipublish ito at mapabatid sa mga Pilipino kasi nga penal law ito so dapat maging familiar tayo lahat sa prim- sa mga provisions nito ang bagaw ito na ipatupad noong January 1, 1932 The Revised Penal Code or Act Number no. 3815 and its amendments, ito yung principal source ng criminal law natin. And then yung iba pa, uh, yung acts enacted or passed by the Philippine Assembly from 1901 to 1935. So yung mga batas simula 1901 to 1935 ay tinatawag na Act Number. Kaya nga ang Revised Penal Code dahil <coughs> 1932 siya, ang tawag sa kanya ay Act Number no. 3815. Yung Commonwealth Acts or laws passed from, passed from 1935 to 1946 naman ay Commonwealth Act number ang tawag. And then, yung Philippine Parliament from 1979 to 1985, ang tawag doon ay batas bilang. So, batas pambansa kasi ang ating legislature noong panahon na yon So, 1979 to 1985. And then, From 1972 to 1986, meron tayong mga presidential decrees or enactments galing sa presidente, si Ferdinand E. Marcos, nung panahon ng martial law. Okay? So, yung mga presidential decrees na ito, na effective hanggang ngayon ang karamihan, ay kaakibat ng kapangyarihan na nakasaad sa ating saligang batas na ang presidente ay may kapangyarihan gumawa ng batas. Um, Republic Acts or Congressional Enactments from the Declaration of Philippine Independence in 1946 until the Declaration of Martial Law in 1972 and resumed in 1987 when the present Congress was organized under the 1987 Constitution. So si, sa mga panahon na yon, ang tawag sa mga batas natin ay Republic Acts or, or Congressional Enactments. So kaya nga Republic Act 9165, Republic Act 7610 Ano naman ang role ng court decision? So, ang court decisions, ang mga <clears throat> desisyon ng Supreme Court ay hindi sources ng criminal law because they merely explain the meaning of and apply the laws as enacted by the legislative branch of government. So, interpretation ng mga batas lang ang ginagawa ng Supreme Court. Siyempre, yung jurisprudence or yung interpretation ng batas ng Supreme Court will apply to the cases being litigated. Pero hindi siya ang pinaka-source. Interpretation lang. Kasi ang government natin divided into three co-equal branch. Yung gumagawa ng batas, legislative. Yung nagpapatupad ng batas, executive. At yung nag i ng batas, judiciary. Okay? May, meron ta- tayong three great powers of the state. Yan yung police power power of eminent domain or power of expropriation and power of taxation. Yung police power, yan yung i-promote ang general welfare. Power of eminent domain or power of expropriation, yan yung kapangyarihang kunin ang mga private property for public use after just compensation. And then power of taxation, yan yung maglatag ng buwis para makalikom ng pera para sa operasyon ng gobyerno or <clears throat> the operations of government. Police power is the power of promoting public welfare by restraining and regulating the use of both liberty and property 
of all the people. Examples of the state use of police power are food and drug regulations, environmental preservation laws, and workplace safety laws. Power to define and punish crimes. Kaakibat yan ang police power. So the state has the authority under its police power to define and punish crimes and to lay the rules of criminal procedure. States, as part of their police power, have a large measure of discretion in creating and defining criminal offenses. So yung pag-create and pag-define ng criminal offenses, part ng police power of the state. Limitations on the power of Congress to enact penal law. So kahit na may general guidelines tayo as to the power of the state to enact criminal laws, meron namang limitations. So dapat ang <clears throat> ang laws o ang batas na ipinasa ay general in application. Kasi kung hindi siya general in application, magiging specific siya sa certain class, magkakaroon ng <clears throat> prejudice or meron meron tayong tinatawag na uh, hindi pagsunod sa requirement na criminal law must be general in application. Hindi siya pwedeng specific to a certain group unless merong tinatawag natin na valid reason for classification. And then, it must not partake of the nature of an ex post facto law. Ibig sabihin, hindi nito paparusahan ang isang bagay na hindi pa naman krimen nung ginawa ito. And then, must not partake of the nature of bill of attainder. Dapat, hindi siya batas na agad-agad ay maghuhusga sa taong <clears throat> nagiging suspect sa commission of a crime bagkos ay bibigyan siya ng tinatawag nating due process of law a hearing before conviction then must not impose cruel and unusual punishment or excessive fines so yun yung mga limitations no one may be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. There are two types of due process, procedural and substantive. Procedural due process is based on the concept of fundamental fairness. So, ang due process of law, ang pinaka-basic definition natin dyan is the law that hears before it condemns. So, dalawang aspeto ito. Procedural, dapat yung proseso, ang bibigay ng pagkakataon. And then, substantive, dapat yung batas mismo, yung pinaka-main source or yung pinaka-buod ng nagpaparusang batas ay dapat walang infirmity or defect. Halimbawa, hindi siya dapat ex post facto, hindi siya dapat bill of attainder. Criminal law must be of general application and must clearly define the acts and omissions punished as crime. So, ito ang due process. Ito yung pinaka-meet ng due process. Pangkalahatan, and then malinaw ang mga pinaparusahan, and then applicable to, to, to all na sa pangkalahatan. Ang ex post facto law ay isang batas na gumagawa ng isang bagay na criminal kahit na nung ginawa ito ay hindi pa naman siya pinaparusahan. And then, ang isang batas na pinapalala ang krimen or mas matindi ang parusa na mag apply doon sa mga nagawa ng krimen ay ex post facto. Kapag pinapalitan ng parusa at mas matindi ang parusa na ipapataw sa batas kahit na ito ay in effect pa noon and yung parusang bagong it, ang bagong parusang ito ay i-apply retroactively ex post facto lo yan yung binabago ang rules of evidence and then ang conviction ay um, ginawang mas madali kumpara nung sa uh, halimbawa ang requirements sa uh, treason ay at least two, wit two witnesses for the same overt act pag ginawa yan na isa na lang then mag apply sa mga nauna pang kaso that will be an ex post facto law Assumes to regulate civil rights and remedies only in effect imposes penalty or deprivation of right for something which when done was lawful. So kahit mga <coughs> civil rights and remedies lang ang binabago niya, kung yun ay retroactive, that is still a, an ex post facto law. And then, a law which deprives a person accused of a crime some lawful protection to which has become entitled such as protection 
of a former conviction or acquittal or proclamation of amnesty, yan ay ex post facto law. Ang Bill of Attainger, ito ay legislative act which inflicts punishment without trial. Its essence is the substitution of a legislative for a judicial determination of guilt. So, yung mga mambabatas na mismo ang nagsasabi kung sino ang guilty or not guilty, hindi yung mga hukuman. For example, Congress passes a law which authorizes the arrest and imprisonment of communists without the benefit of judicial trial. So, that is a bill of attainder. Ano ang mga principal parts ng ating revised penal code? So, Articles 1 to 20, yan yung big principles and circumstances affecting criminal liability. Yung Articles 21 to 113, yan yung provisions on penalties including criminal and civil liability. And Articles 114 to 367, yan yung felonies defined under the different titles. So, ang sakop ng Criminal Law 1 ay Articles 1 to 20, Articles 21 to 113. Articles 114 to 367, yan ay covered na ng ating Criminal Law 2 or Revised Penal Code Book 2. Yung Republic Act 9346, yan yung batas na nagbabawal sa imposition of death penalty in the Philippines. So, suspended ang death penalty natin. Constitutional rights of the accused, nadaanan rin ninyo ito sa criminal procedure. Okay, ang criminal procedure ay... <clears throat> magkakaugnay lang din naman yan sa criminal law 1 at sa ating tinatawag na rules of evidence and so on so ang um, article 3 yan yung bill of rights ng ating constitution at nagsasaad yan ng mga sumusunod na rights of the accused so right to speedy disposition of their cases right to due process of law right to bail presumption of innocence, right to presumption of innocence, right against self-incrimination, right against excessive fines, cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment, right against double jeopardy, right to free access to courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate legal assistance. Yung constitutional rights na yon ay napapaloob sa ating constitution or sa ligang batas. Ang statutory rights of the accused naman, ito ay napapaloob sa mga other laws, yung ating revised, yung ating tinatawag na rules of court halimbawa or iba pang mga legislation liban sa saligang batas. So, meron tayong statutory right of the accused to be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved beyond reasonable doubt. To be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. Ito yung arraignment. Na? To be present and defend in person and by counsel at every stage of the proceedings from arraignment to promulgation of judgment. To testify as a witness on his own behalf but subject to cross-examination on matters covered by the direct examination. His silence shall not in any manner prejudice him. To be exempt from being compelled to be a witness against himself, ito yung right against self-incrimination. To confront and cross-examine the witnesses against him at tr trial, so cross-examination. To have compulsory press process issued to secure the attendance of witnesses and production of other evidence in his behalf. Ito yung sapina. So, ang sapina, ang patawag, maaring patawag para magtestigo, sapina testificandum, or patawag para magproduce ng documents, sapina duces tecum. So, kadalasan, sapina testificandum ad duces tecum. So, ito yung pagpapatawag para magtestigo kaugnay sa certain documents na pinapaproduce. And then, to have speedy, impartial, and public trial, and then right to appeal in all cases allowed in the manner prescribed by law. So, yung right of appeal is a statutory right. So, dapat sundin kung anong proseso. Rights which are personal, like right to cross, right to confrontation and cross-examination may be waived, while those which involve public interest, which may be affected, like the right to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him, cannot be waived. So, hindi mo pwedeng i-waive ang iyong right to be arraigned and your right to enter a plea. The right of the accused to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him cannot be waived. So, yung arraignment, no? Yung criminal law ay may apat na characteristics. So, general, territorial, prospective, and legal. Now, although 
kadalasan itong tatlo lang ang nababanggit. Pero dahil nga may prinsipyo tayo na nulumkrimen sinapinalehe, ang ibig sabihin nun, dapat lahat ng batas kriminal ay na isa batas talaga. So, legality ang pangapat. Although sa ibang sa ibang textbook or sa ibang author, itong tatlo lang ang nababanggit. Pero pag apat ang hinihingi, syempre idagdag ninyo yung legality or legal. Criminal law is binding on all persons who reside or sojourn in Philippine territory regardless of nationality, gender, age, or other personal circumstances. So ito yung generality principle. Amerikano ka man or Afrikano, basta't nasa Pilipinas, kasaklaw o sakop ka ng ating criminal law. Article 14 of the Civil Code provides that penal law shall be obligatory upon all who live or sojourn in the Philippine territory. So, lahat ng nasa Pilipinas. The revised penal code or other penal law is not applicable when a military, military court Republic Act 7055 takes cognizance of the case. So, kung dinidinig na ng isang military court, ng isang court martial, ang isang kaso, so hindi na mag-apply ang revised penal code. Ang take cognizance, ibig sabihin ng take cognizance of something, to take notice of and consider something especially when judging. The lawyer asked the jury to take cognizance of the defendant's generosity in giving to charity, knowledge, and awareness. So, take cognizance of something okay ibig sabihin noon e recognize mo from the word cognizance e recognize mo yung isang bagay jurisdiction power or authority given by law to a court or tribunal to hear and determine certain controversies power of course to hear and determine a controversy involving rights which are demandable and enforceable Philippine archipelago includes all the islands that comprise the Philippines. Atmosphere extends to the airspace which covers the Philippine territory subject to the right of way or easement in favor of foreign aircraft. So, territorio natin yan pero may free freedom of navigation on our seas and on our air. No? So, kalawakan. Interior waters, all bodies of water that connect all the islands such as lakes, bays, rivers, and streams. So, yun yung mga interior waters. Maritime zone, that is the 3-mile limit beyond our shore measured at low tide. High tide or low tide? So, low tide. Na? High seas refer to any waters on the sea coast which are without the boundaries of low low. No, LO watermark or the portion of the ocean which is beyond the territorial jurisdiction of any country. So yan yung high seas yung do, simula doon sa low watermark hindi hanggang doon sa abot ng tanaw mo. Okay, yun yung tinatawag nating high seas. Lagpas doon sa abot tanaw mo yun ang tinatawag nating high seas. The Philippines has an exclusive economic zone that covers 2,263,816 square kilometers. It claims an EEZ of 200 nautical miles from its shore. So, 200 nautical miles. This is due to the 7,641 islands comprising the Philippine archipelago. It is partially located in South China Sea, the Philippine Sea, and the Celebes Sea. Treaties and laws of preferential application like the Visiting Forces Agreement and Military Bases Agreement are some of the exceptions to the generality principle. So, meron tayo law and preferential application, diplomatic relatives and their domestic servants. So, yung mga ito, okay, exempt sa ating criminal law. Kahit nandito sila sa Pilipinas. Principles of public international law. So, mga sovereigns and other chiefs of state, heads of state, ambassadors, persons with diplomatic status and immunity, ministers ple plenipotentiary, ministers resident, charge the affairs, sila ay hindi saklaw ng ating criminal law kahit nandito sila sa Pilipinas. Law, on preferential, law of preferential application in favor of diplomatic relatives and their domestic helpers. Ito yung RA-75. Consul is an official representative of the government of one state in the territory of another, normally acting to assist and protect the civilians of the consul's own country and to facilitate trade and friendship between the people of the two countries. So, yun yung trabaho ng consul. Parang representative siya primarily for tinatawag nating trade and 
Okay, good relationships. Consuls, by, by, vice consuls and other commercial representatives of foreign nations do not possess the status and cannot claim the privileges and immunities accorded to ambassadors and ministers. So, hindi sila saklaw ng immunity na yon. Territorial principles, so punish crimes committed within the Philippine territory. So, ang territory na tinutukoy natin ay terrestrial, ito yung exercise, jurisdiction exercise over land, fluvial jurisdiction, it is the jurisdiction exercise over the maritime zone, aerial jurisdiction is the jurisdiction exercise over the atmosphere. The three international theories on aerial jurisdiction, so meron tayong tinatawag na the atmosphere over the country is free and not subject to the jurisdiction of the subjacent sta state except for the protection of its national territory. So, if a crime is committed on board a foreign aircraft at the atmos atmosphere of a country, the law of that country does not govern unless the crime affects the national security. So, yun yung unang prinsipyo ng aerial jurisdiction natin. Relative theory, the subjacent state exercise jurisdiction only to the extent that it can effectively exercise control thereof. So, if a crime was committed on the aircraft, which is already beyond the control of the subjacent state, which exercises control, then its criminal law will govern. So, kung kaya niyang <clears throat> ipa-impose, kaya, okay, so kung hindi, that will be outside the jurisdiction already. Absolute theory, the subjacent state has complete jurisdiction over the atmosphere above it, subject only to innocent passage by aircrafts of foreign country. So, if the crime is committed in an aircraft, no matter how high, as long as it is within Philipp te Philippine territory, the Philippine criminal law governs. This is a theory adopted by the Philippines. So, absolute theory tayo. Lahat. Pero hindi natin na-apply yan dahil walang kakayanan tayo to impose. Exceptions to the territorial application of criminal law. So, meron tayong exemptions. Kasi nga, ang rule natin is Philippine criminal law will be applicable only in the Philippine territory. Pero, based dito sa Article 2 ng ating Revised Penal Code, yung mga gumagawa ng crime in Philippine ship or a ship, sakop ng criminal law natin, yung mga namemeke ng pera ng Pilipinas, saklaw ng ating criminal law kahit ginawa sa Hong Kong yung pagpapapasok ng mga faked or counterfeited obligations and securities saklaw ng ating criminal law while being public officers and employees should commit an offense in the exercise of their functions kahit sa abroad sila saklaw ng ating criminal law should commit any of the crimes against national security and the law of nations saklaw ng ating criminal law should destroy or cause destruction to the maritime or marine zone, the EEZ, and the natural resources within the EEZ of the Philippines, saklaw yan ang ating criminal law. Yung Republic Act 3046 delineates the extent of Philippine territorial jurisdiction in accordance with the baseline theory. So, ito yung baseline theory. The, con the Convention of the Law on the Seas, yung tinatawag nilang UNCLOS, provides that the territorial sea extends 12 nautical miles and exclusive economic zone is 200 nautical, nautical miles outward from the shores of the country. So, yun yung sinasabi sa ating Convention of the Law on the Sea or UNCLOS. Meron tayong rules regarding foreign merchant vessels na nasa Pilipinas. So, meron tayong English rule at French rule. So, under the English or territoriality rule, the country has jurisdiction over such offenses unless the same affect or refer only to internal management of the vessel. So, restrictive theory. Our criminal justice system applies the English rule. So, French at saka English rule. No? So, sa, English ru sa French rule, such crimes are not triable. So, ang English, such crimes are triable. And then, sa French, not triable in the courts of that country unless their commission affects the peace and security of the territory or the safety of the state is endangered. So, ito ang restrictive theory. Now, <clears throat> kung titingnan mo suma total, pareho lang din naman ang sinasabi, pero ang basihan mo para malaman kung French siya or 
English rule ay okay, kapag sinasabi na merong jurisdiction, English rule. Kapag sinasabi na not triable, so sa English, triable. Sa French rule, not triable. So, restrictive theory. Okay, utilitarian theory or protective theory. So, sinasabi ng utilitarian theory or pro protective theory na ang pinakapangunahin na purpose ng pagpaparusa under criminal law is the protection of society from actual and potential wrongdoers. The courts, therefore, in exacting retribution for the wrong society, should direct the punishment to potential or actual wrongdoers. Since criminal law is directed against acts and omissions which the society does not approve. So, yun yung utilitarian or protective theory. The courts, therefore, in exacting retribution for the wrong society, should direct the punishment to potential or actual wrongdoers since criminal law is directed against acts and omissions which the society does. Consistent with this theory, the mala prohibit the principle which punishes an offense regardless of malice or criminal intent should not be utilized to apply the full harshness of the special law. So, yun yung protective or utilitarian theory. Prospectivity of criminal law. So, it is prospective in that a penal law cannot make an, an act punishable when, punish, when not punishable when committed. Crimes are punished under the laws in force in the time of the commission. Generally, the law does not have any retroactive effect. The revised penal code provides that felonies are punishable under the laws in force at the time of their commission. Exemption, whenever a new statute dealing with a crime establishes conditions more lenient or favorable to the accused, it can be given retroactive effect. So, kapag favorable sa kanya, pwedeng magkaroon ng retroactive effect. Ang batas na yun. Exemption to the exemption. Kahit na favorable to the accused, hindi siya mabibigyan ng retroactive application kapag the, ang offender ay habitual delinquent or criminal. Or kapag nakasaad mismo sa batas na hindi applicable sa mga iba. Different effects of repeal on penal law. So, if the repeal makes the penalty lighter in the new law, the new law shall be applied. Except when the offender is a habitual delinquent or the new law is made not applicable to pending action or existing causes of action. If the new law imposes a heavier penalty, the law in force at the time of the commission of the offense shall be applied. So, meron kang option kung i-apply mo ang bagong batas or ang lumang batas at yun ay kapag mas malala ang penalty sa bagong batas i-apply mo ang lumang batas kasi you always apply the law favorable to the accused in case of doubt if the new law totally repeals the existing law so that the act which was penalized under the old law is no longer punishable the crime is obliterated so erase na yung crime obliterated na ang crime when the repeal is absolute, the offense ceases to be criminal. So, kapag na-repeal na yung batas, hindi na krimen yung bagay na yan. And that can be given retroactive effect because that is favorable to the accused. Penal laws are strictly construed against the government and liberally in favor of the accused. The rule that penal statutes should be strictly construed against the state may be invoked only where the law is ambiguous and there is doubt as to its interpretation. So, kapag mayroong duda o kalabuan sa batas, that's the time that you make a construction against the government and in favor of the accused. Where the law is clear and unambiguous, there is no room for the rule on liberal interpretation in favor of the accused. So, no need to interpret in favor of the accused kapag malinaw naman ang sinasaad. Meron tayong um, legal maxim in Latin, nulum crimen, nula pina sine lehe, which supports the principle of legality of criminal law. A crime should be defined and penalty imposed only by a statute. So, hindi siya pwedeng common law principle and so on. The doctrine of pro rio, a penal law is to be construed or applied and the law admits of two interpretations, one lenient to the offender 
and one strict to the offender, the former interpretation, which is lenient and favor or favorable to the offender, will be adopted. So, kapag mayroong kalabuan ng batas, ang interpretation mo ay maaring dalawang interpretation. Yung isa ay favorable sa akusado, yung isa against the accused. So, doon ka <coughs> papanig sa interpretation that is lenient to the offender or the accused. Pro rio, this is in consonance with the fundamental rule that all doubts shall be construed in favor of the accused and consistent with presumption of innocence of the accused. This is peculiar only to criminal law. So, yung rule regarding pro rio ay applicable lang sa criminal law. Walang ganito sa civil law. The principle of in dubio pro rio, Latin for when in doubt, for the accused means that a defendant may not be convicted by the court when doubts about his or her guilt remain. So, in case of doubt, favor the accused, nor when in doubt for the accused. Mens rea, the intention or knowledge of wrongdoing that constitutes part of a crime as opposed to the action or conduct of accused. Actus rius non facit rium nisi mens set rea. The act itself does not constitute guilt unless done with a guilty intent. So, yun yung mens rea. Nulum crimen, nula pina sinilehe, there is no crime when there is no law punishing the act. Therefore, in order for an act or omission to be punished, there must be a law that forbids it, and that law at the same time must provide for a penalty for violating it. Actus non facet rium nisi mens et rea. The act cannot be criminal where the mind is not criminal. This is true to felony characterized by dolo, but not to felony resulting from culpa. This maxim is not absolute one because it does not apply to culpable felonies or those that result from negligence. So, sa felonies punishable as culpa or culpable uh, felonies, yun yung mga committed because of negligence, lack of foresight, you do not apply this. Kasi doon, sa mga kaso na yun ay <clears throat> hindi applicable ang prinsipyo na where the mind is not criminal. Kasi ang pinaparusahan doon ay negligence, imprudence, and lack of foresight or skill. This is true to felony characterized by dolo but not to felony resulting from culpa. So, nabanggit na natin kanina yan. An act done by me against my will is not my act. No? Kapag may ginawa ka na labag sa loob mo, halawa, pinilit ka lang na barilin ang kapitbahay mo, otherwise, ang anak mo ang babarilin, that is not your act if binaril mo ang kapitbahay mo. Exempt ka sa criminal liability. And then, ang equipoise doctrine, Ito yung rule which states that when the evidence of the prosecution and the defense are so evenly balanced, the appreciation of such evidence call for tilting of the scales in favor of the accused. So, kapag pantay ang bigat ng evidentia ng prosecution at ng defense, it will be tilted in favor of the accused. Kasi nga, dapat proof beyond reasonable doubt ang tatawag natin quantum of evidence for the accused or against the accused. Strictly construed against the state and any doubt is resolved in favor of the accused. Since Act Number 3815 was written and enacted in Spanish, the original Spanish text of the law prevails over the English text or translation. Criminal law must be uniform in application. So, hindi pwedeng iba-iba unless there is a valid classification. Halimbawa, Siyempre, magkaiba yung bata sa matanda na witness. So, magkaiba. Meron tayong child witness rule and then may ibang rules para sa mga adults. The revised penal code is based mainly on the principles of the classical school. Article uh, Act 3815 of the revised penal code took effect on January 1, 1932. So, doon tayo sa classical school or juristic school. Hindi tayo positivist theory. Yung Republic Act 10951, ito yung batas na nagbabago ng mga parusang multa for damages sa Revised Penal Code. So, nag-take effect ito noong August 29, 2017. So, ito yung tinatawag nating adjusted amount na o ang mga parusa based on the 
devaluation of peso or the prevailing market valuation of our currency. So, meron tayong classical and th positive theory sa ating criminal law. So, yung classical na yan, yan yung juristic. Yung positive theory naman, yan yung tinatawag natin na uh, more on more on um, looking at the good side of the accused no? despite what he uh, what he did the basis of criminal liability is human free will and the purpose of the penalty is retribution yan ang sinasabi ng classical school that man is essentially a moral creature with absolutely free will to choose between good and evil therefore placing more stress upon the effect or result of the felonious act than upon the man the criminal himself so yung focus niya yung nagawang mali ng akusado or ng suspect kasi nga, ang sabi ng classical theory, may free will ka, alam mo ang tama at mali. Kung may ginawa kang mali, so you have to suffer for it. It has endeavored to establish a mechanical and direct proportion between crime and penalty. So, yung bigat ng parusang tatanggapin mo ay nakalipende kung anong bigat ng krimen ang ginawa mo. Wala na silang pakialam sa mga iba pang considerations. And there is a scant regard to the human element. So, yun yung classical sa positivist theory naman ang sinasabi paminsan-minsan daw ang tao ay na-overcome ng strange and morbid phenomenon na kung saan napipilitan siyang gumawa ng isang bagay na ipinagbabawal kahit na yon ay labag sa kanyang loob that crime is essentially a social and natural phenomena and as such it cannot be treated and checked by the application of abstract principles of law and jurisprudence nor by the imposition of punishment fixed and determined a priori so hindi raw pwedeng magkaroon ng advanced prescribed penalty for crimes kasi dapat malaman mo muna ang mga root cause kung bakit gumawa ang isang individual ng crime. Yung root cause na yun, yun ang alamin natin. Kasi, sa palagay ng positive theory, pag hindi mo na-address ang root cause, baliwala ang pagpataw ng mga parusa na yan. But rather through the info. So, ang tinitingnan ng positive theory ay enforcement of individual measures in each particular case after a thorough personal and individual investigation conducted by a competent body of psychiatrists and social scientists. So, yun ang kanilang ina-advocate. So, dapat daw individual ang treatment sa bawat crime. The following offenses are not triable or punishable under the provisions of the revised penal code. So those punished by special laws to which the RPC shall only have supplementary effects. So supplementary, supplementary lang siya. Those committed by persons exempted from local criminal jurisdiction by treaty of stipulations or laws of preferential application. Yung sa mga ambassadors. Those committed by persons subject to local jurisdiction under the principles of public international law, so among heads of state, those committed outside the territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines, except those provided in Article 2 of the Revised Penal Code, and war crimes which are triable by military commissions. Cases where the RPC is applicable even if outside the Philippines. So, nabanggit na natin to kanina, no? So, so yung mga nasa Philippine ship or airship, nagpipake na ating mga pera, nagpapasok ng mga fake na pera sa Pilipinas, public officer or employee, and then yung mga gumawa ng krimen against national security and the law of nations. Crimes committed outside of the Philippines not punishable under the revised penal code shall be cognizable by the regional trial court which charge is first filed. So ito yung doctrine of primary jurisdiction. Kung saan unang naisampa yan na regional trial court, mananatili doon ang jurisdiction. Doctrine of primary jurisdiction. Republic Act 9372 or the Human Security Act of 2007 has extraterritorial application.
Article 3, uh, Paragraph 1 of the Revised Penal Code, Acts and Omissions Punishable by the Revised Penal Code. Ito yung definition ng felony. So, crimes, offenses are used for violations of special laws. So, kapag ito ay acts or omissions punishable by the Revised Penal Code, yan ay tinatawag na felony. Kapag yan ay violations of special laws that may be termed as crimes or offenses. Felonies are committed by means of deceit, dolo, or by means of culpa, or negligence, or lack of foresight, lack of skill, and so on. Elements of felonies, there must be an act or omission, that the act or omission be punishable by the revised penal code, that the act is performed or the omission incurred by means of dolo or culpa, and that the act or omission be voluntary. So, ito yung mga elements of elements of felonies by act must be understood any bodily movement tending to produce some effect on the external world so yan ang definition ng act so hindi kasama dito yung mental act kasi ang mental act wala namang effect no? so doon lang yan sa isip lamang only external act is punished because internal acts internal act is beyond the sphere of penal law so hindi na saklaw ang internal acts. By omission is meant in action, the failure to perform a positive duty which one is bound to do. There must be a law requiring the doing or performance of an act. Reasons for punishing acts or negligence. A man must use common sense and exercise due reflection in all his acts. It is his duty to be cautious, careful, and prudent. If not from instinct, then through fear of incurring punishment. So, dapat daw maingat ang bawat individual sa kanyang ginagawa. Kasi kapag makapag-cause siya ng injury sa ibang tao because of his negligence, he would be, fun, he would be punished for it. So, kung hindi man siya maingat na klase ng tao, at least matatakot siya sa parusa. He is responsible for such acts as anyone might foresee and for his acts which no one would have performed except through culpable abandon. Otherwise, his own person, rights, and property and those of his fellow beings would ever be exposed to all manner of danger or injury. Kasi kung hindi ganun ang sistema natin, ang mga tao daw ay magiging pabaya na lang at walang katakot-takot na gagawa ng mga bagay na hindi alintana ang magiging perwisyon nito sa kanilang kapwa-tao. Kailan daw meron deceit? So, there is deceit when the act is performed with deliberate intent, will fall for full fall, determined after a thoughtful evaluation of all relevant factors, dispassionate, to act with a particular intent which is derived from a careful consideration of factors that influence the choice to be made. So, yun yung deceit. So, de deceit is an act which is performed with deliberate intent. The following requisites must conquer for intentional felonies that the offender must have freedom while doing an act or omitting to do an act, that the offender must have intelligence while doing the act or omitting to do an act, and that the offender must have intent while doing the act or omitting to do the act. The following have no freedom. The person who acts under the compulsion of an irresistible force or a person who acts under the impulses of an uncontrollable fear of an equal or greater injury thus they are exempt from criminal liability under article 2 under, uh, under article 12 paragraphs 5 and 6 respectively of the revised penal code ito yung exempting circumstances okay so yung imbecile insane liba na lang kapag he acted during the lucid interval yung lucid interval yan yung moment na yung insane person hindi na insane no kasi may mga tao na hindi continuous insanity pas sumpong sumpong persons under 15 years and uh, 15 years and below walang criminal liability a person over 15 but below 18 wala unless they acted with discernment walang criminal liability Intent to commit the act with malice being merely a mental process is presumed and the presumption arises from the proof of the commission of the unlawful act. No? Kasi ang intent ay internal. No? So, kailangan kapag may ginawa siya isang bagay, i-presume na lang yung intent. All the three requisites of voluntariness, 
An intentional felony must be present because a voluntary act is free, intelligent, and intentional. When the wrongful act results from imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill, magkakaroon ng fault or culpa. Requisites para masabi natin na fault or culpa that the offender must have freedom while doing the act or omitting to do an act, that the offender must have intelligence while doing the act or omitting to do an act, that the offender is imprudent, negligent, or lacks foresight or skill while doing the act or omitting to do the act. Intentional felonies or felonies committed with malice or deliberate intent, culpable felonies or felonies committed as a result of imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill, ito yung dalawang classification of felonies according to the means by which they are committed. Intentional felonies, the act or omission of the offender is malicious, the act is performed with deliberate intent, with malice, the offender in performing the act or incurring the omission has intention to cause injury to another. So, yun yung difference between intentional felonies and culpable felonies. In culpable felonies, the act or omission is of the offender is not malicious. The injury caused by the offender to another person is unintentional, it being simply the incident of another act performed without malice. The wrongful act results from imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Imprudence means deficiency of action in avoiding an injury due to lack of skill. Both result to a culpable felony. So, yun yung meaning ng imprudence. So, paki, dapat kay memorize ninyo ito. Deficiency of action, imprudence. Negligence is the deficiency of perception or lack of foresight, the failure to foresee impending injury, thoughtlessness, failure to use ordinary care. So, yun naman ang meaning ng negligence. Mens rea, so the model penal code recognizes four different levels of mens rea, purpose, same as intent, knowledge, recklessness, and negligence. The intention or knowledge of wrongdoing that constitutes part of a crime as opposed to the action or conduct of the accused. Yan yung mens rea. General classes of crimes, so meron tayong intentional felonies and culpable felonies and those crimes defined and penalized by special laws which include crimes punishable by municipal or city ordinances. Who incurs criminal liability? So criminal liability shall be incurred by any person committing a felony delito although the wrongful act done be different from which from that which he intended. By any person performing an act which would be an offense against persons or property were it not for the inherent impossibility of each accomplishment or on account of the employment of inadequate or ineffectual means. So, yun yung dalawang, dalawang tinatawag natin na dalawang group na pwedeng gumawa ng criminal, magiging liable for criminal liability. So, ano naman ang mistake of fact? So, sa kaso ni U.S. versus Achong, nandyan nakalagay ang uh, principle of um proximate cause yung mistake of fact no so mistake of fact is the misapprehension of fact on the part of the person who caused injury to another he is not however criminally liable because he did not act with criminal intent no so kasi kung ang sets of facts sa pagkakaakala mo ay ganun at dahil doon ginawa mo ang isang bagay na krimen Pero kung ganun nga talaga ang mga bagay alin sunod sa inyong pagkakaalam o pagkakaintindi, ang ginawa mong krimen ay justified. So, meron kang mistake of fact in your favor. So, that the act done would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believed them to be, that the intention of the accused in performing the act would have been lawful, and that the mistake must be without fault or carelessness on the part of the accused. So, ang mistake of fact, Ang mistake of fact na tinutukoy natin would always okay, set aside the idea of recklessness or fault. Error in personae. Ito yung mga 
causes which may produce a result different from that which the offender intended. So, ibang intention niya, ibang naging result. So, meron tayong error in personae or mistake in the identity of the victim. Aberratio ictus or mistake in the blow. That is when the offender pretending to do an injury to another, intending to do an injury to another person actually inflicts it on another and preter intention num when the injurious result is greater than that intended or the act exceeds the intent that an intentional felony has been committed and that the wrong done to the aggrieved party by the direct natural and logical consequences of a felony committed by the f offender the felony committed must be the proximate cause of the resulting injury so kahit na ibang krimen ang naging result liable pa rin ang tao na yun kasi nga meron pa rin siyang criminal tendency meron siyang mens rea people versus one is naman ito yung case na kung saan opposite ito ng achong kasi dito kitang kita mo na negligent sila or careless ang mga operatives so meron kasi silang order, mission order na hulihin ang isang kriminal na nakatakas. Nakita nila ang sinasabing ang inaakala nilang kriminal na yon na natutulog sa kanyang kubo-kubo sa bukid, nakatalikod sa kanila. Okay, inisip nila na yon talaga si Juanis, pinagbabaril nila only to find out na ibang tao pa na yon. So, merong recklessness dito, merong negligence, merong mali sa ginawa ng mga kapuli, uh, kapulisan kasi dapat inalam muna nila yung identity ng natutulog na tao na yan. Proximate cause, that cause which in natural and continuous sequence and broken by any efficient intervening cause produces the injury and without which the result would not have occurred. So, ito yung definition ng proximate cause. So, yun yung panimula na sanhe na nagresulta sa injury na kung hindi dahil doon sa sanhi na yon hinulasa ng injury na nangyari so ito yung original na term na ginamit doon el causa es causa de la causa es causa del mal causado he who is the cause of the cause is the cause of the evil cause a good case of doctrines that el que es causa de la causa es causa del mal causado He who is the cause of the cause is the cause of the evil cause. Ito yung kaso ng people versus oral. So, dito sa kaso versus oral na to, uh, makikita natin yung application ng doctrine ng proximate cause. The felony committed is not the proximate cause of the resulting injury. When there is an active force that intervened between the felony committed and the resulting injury and the active force is a distinct act or fact absolutely foreign from the felonious act of the accused or when the resulting injury is due to the intentional act of the victim. So, hin walang proximate cause doon, walang liability kasi nga merong effective intervening cause. Ang impossible crime is an act which would be an offense against persons or property were it not for the inherent impossibility of its accomplishment or on account of the employment of inadequate or ineffectual means. So, ang impossible crime actually is hindi crime. No? Hindi siya crime pero pinaparusahan siya kasi nga merong criminal propensity or criminal instinct or tendency ang isang individual. Requisites of impossible crime that the act performed would be an offense against, okay, would be. So, sa, naging krimen sana siya against personal property. Pero dahil hindi, no? the act was done with evil intent that its accomplishment is inherent, er, inherently impossible or that the means employed is either inadequate or ineffectual that the act performed should not constitute a violation of another provision of the revised penal code. Kasi kung merong violation under the other provisions of the revised penal code hindi na siya impossible crime merong crime na nangyari example of impossible crimes stabbing a person lying on bed okay, yun pala patay na yun so, hindi ka pwedeng magiging liable for killing a person who is already killed no? 
So, kung alam mo na patay na yon, ang pinakakasalanan mo would be pagmaltrato sa patay, no? Yung desecrate desecration of the dead. Picking the pocket of another without his consent. Yun pala, yung wallet mo ang andon kasi yun ang nawawala mong wallet. O, oh, impossible crime yun. Pero, may parusa ka kasi nga, merong criminal propensity or tendency. Impossible crime. The means employed is inadequate. So, kulang ang ginamit na pamamaraan. So, halimbawa, ang nailagay mo na lason, hindi sapat, isang pulbo, isang maliit lang na okay, na pulbos ng lason, hindi naman yung nakakamatay. So, impossible crime. Ineffectual. Akala mo lason yun, asukal pala. So, ineffectual. Crimes in, the crimes mala in say are those so serious in their effects on society as to call for almost unanimous condemnation of its members. While crimes mala prohibit are violations of mere rules of convenience designed to secure a more orderly regulations of the affairs of society. So, ito yung dalawa. Mala and say mala prohibita. Ito, inherently evil, ito, nagiging crime lang because there is a law punishing it. Factors that must be considered by the court in determining the proper penalty are the social danger, second, the degree of criminality shown by the offender as provided in Article 59. So, ito ang tinitingnan ng korte. Yung social danger involved at saka degree of criminality. <clears throat> Kapag sobra-sobra naman ang parusang ipinapapataw ng batas, so what the court can do is kung anong sinasaad sa batas, i-apply niya and then pwede siyang sumulat or mag-submit na kanya report sa chief executive through the Department of Justice and then ilagay niya doon ang sa tingin niya ay tamang parusang dapat i-impose without suspending the execution of the sentence kasi kung ano ang nasa batas doon dapat ang susundin niya The three stages of execution of a felony are attempted, frustrated, and consummated. So, attempted, frustrated, consummated. A felony is attempted when the offender commences the commission of a felony directly by overt acts and does not perform all the acts of execution which should produce the felony by reason of some cause or accident other than his own spontaneous assistance. So, sa attempted felony, hindi lahat, no? and does not perform all the acts of execution. Yan ang kaibahan ng attempted, so frustrated, at consummated. So, sa attempted, the offender commences the commission of the felony directly by overt acts. He does not perform all the acts of execution which would produce the felony. The offender's act be not stopped by his own spontaneous assistance and the non-performance of all the acts of execution was due to a cause or accident other than his own spontaneous assistance. Hindi siya kusang kusa na <clears throat> o matras o nagbago ang isip sa paggawa ng krimen kasi kung spontaneous assistance he will have no liability kasi nga pinapaburan ng batas ang taong nagbago ang isip sa paggawa ng krimen so halimbawa hindi niya natapos kasi halimbawa biglang hinila yung kanyang nais na uh, patayin sa pamamagitan ng saksak ng taong sumaklolo so attempted lang A felony is frustrated when the offender performs all the acts of execution which would produce a felony as a consequence but which nevertheless did not produce it by reason of causes independent of the will of the perpetrator. So, sobrang dami na ng saksak, mamamatay na sana si A, pero nagkataon na may doktor na sobrang galing na mahawakan pala niya ang sugat, gumaling na si A. So, yun ay frustrated lang. Elements of frustrated felony, the offender performs all the acts of execution. All the acts performed would produce the felony as a consequence. The felony is not produced by reason of causes independent of the will of the perpetrator. So, yun yung mga elements of frustrated felony. So, frustrated felony distinguished from attempted felony. So, dito parehong hindi na-accomplish ang criminal purpose. Sa frustrated felony, nagawa na ng offender lahat ng acts of the execution, hindi nga lang na katuparan ng nais niyang krimen. Sa attempted, hindi niya nagawa lahat na, na nagsisimula pa lang siya, okay, directly by overt acts, hindi niya nagawa lahat ng acts para maisa katuparan iyon. At <clears throat> hindi niya 
umatras siya hindi dahil sa kanyang uh, spontaneous decision kung hindi because of some other reasons frustrated felony from attempted so in frustrated offender has reached the objective phase in attempted felony offender has not passed the subjective phase meron pa siyang chance to desist na no? magbago ang isip subjective phase it is that portion of the execution of the crime starting from the point where the offender begins to that point where he has still control over his overt acts including their na natural course so meron pa siyang pagkakataon na huminto o magbago at mapigilan ang pag execute ng krimen. Ang objective phase naman, ito yung portion of the acts of the offender where he has no more control over the same. All the acts of execution have been performed by him. Himala na lang kung hindi yun ma isa katuparan. In attempted or frustrated felony, an impossible crime, the evil intent of the offender is not accomplished. In impossible crime, the evil intent of the offender cannot be accomplished. In attempted or frustrated felony, the evil intent of the offender is possible of accomplishment. In impossible crime, the evil intent of the offender cannot be accomplished or because the means employed by the offender is inadequate or ineffectual. In attempted or frustrated, what prevented its accomplishment is the intervention of certain cause or accident in which the offender had no part. So, yun yung kaibahan ng okay, attempted felony, frustrated felony from impossible crime. Felonies that have no attempted or frustrated stages of execution. So, meron tayong flight to enemy country, corruption of minors, formal crimes like slander and false testimony, felonies by omission like misprision of treason and treason. So, yun ay formal crimes. No? Wala silang attempted or frustrated stages. Consummated felony. A felony is consummated when all the elements necessary for its execution and accomplishment are present. Ang tanong na madalas <coughs> tinatanong patungkol dito sa, ha, sa frustrated at uh, consummated, paano kaya si Pedro ng ilang beses at <coughs> napigilan ang hindi namatay si sinaksak ni Pedro si A. So, Hindi na matay si A dahil nga merong medical intervention. So, na-hospital siya ng mga ilang araw. Nagpapagaling um, sa ospital. So, ano kaso ang haharapin ni Pedro? So, frustrated. Halimbawa, frustrated homicide or frustrated murder. Depende sa mga attending circumstances. Paano ngayon kapag namatay si Pedro after halimbawa 15 days sa hospital? So, yung kaso na isinampa na frustrated murder or frustrated homicide, maring i-amend ng um, homicide or murder. Kasi nga, ang pagkamatay ni Pedro ay isang intervening cause na justified naman para baguhin ang charge. Walang walang dihado doon or walang violation ng rights ni Pedro. What is an overt act? So, an overt act is physical activity more than a mere planning or preparation which evinces an intention of the offender to commit a particular felony. So, yun yung overt act. So, physical activity siya. Conspiracy. A conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a felony and decide to commit it. So, sa conspiracy, two or more persons. Requisites of conspiracy that two or more persons come to an agreement that the agreement concerned the commission of a felony and that the commission of the felony be decided upon. Three classification of felonies according to gravity. So, meron tayong grave felonies in which the law attaches the capital punishment or penalties in which any of their periods are afflictive in accordance with Article 25 of the Revised Penal Code. So, yun yung grave felonies. Yung less grave felonies naman in which the law punishes with penalties which in their maximum period are correctional in accordance with Article 25 of the Revised Penal Code. Yung light felonies naman, those infractions of law for the commission of which a penalty of arrest of minor or a fine not exceeding, hindi na ito 200, binago na ito, 40,000 pesos na, or both as provided by Article 9, Paragraph 3 of the RPC. Alin sunod ito sa Republic Act 10951, yung rationalization of the of the fines imposed by the revised penal code. Yung 200 pesos naging 40,000 pesos. Kasi yung 200 pesos na fine na ito, 1932, okay, malayo na ang diferensya sa halaga ng pera ngayong 2021. 
imputability this is the quality by which an act may be ascribed to a person or its author or owner it implies that the act committed has been freely and consciously done and may therefore be put down to the doer as his very own so imputability pagpapako sa isang individual ng isang krimen yung responsibility is the obligation of suffering the consequences of a crime it is the obligation of taking the penal and civil consequence of the crime so ang responsibility ay yung pag <coughs> pataw sa isang tao ng parusa na dapat <coughs> mapa mapunta sa kanya dahil sa kanyang guilt for the commission of the crime Guilt is the element of responsibility for a man cannot be made to answer for consequences of a crime unless he is guilty. So, ang guilt ay elemento ng responsibility. Meron tayong circumstances that affect criminal liability. Ito yung justifying circumstances, Article 11 ng Revised Penal Code, exempting circumstances, Article 12, and other absolutory causes, Article 20, 124, last paragraph na Revised Penal Code. Meron tayong mitigating circumstances sa Article 13, aggravating circumstances sa Article 14, and alternative circumstances sa Article 15. Ang justifying circumstances, sinasabi na any person acting under any of the justifying circumstances does not incur criminal liability. The act of a person under any of the justifying circumstances is in accordance with law. So, mahalaga ito na in accordance with law ang kanyang ginawa kapag justifying so that such person is considered or deemed not to have transgressed the law and is free from both criminal and civil liability. So, yan yung justifying circumstances. Justifying circumstances are matters of defense and it is incumbent upon the accused in order to avoid criminal liability to prove the justifying circumstance claimed by him to the satisfaction of the court. So, ang justifying circumstances na ito dapat i-prove mo with the proof required in proving the elements of the crime. So, proof beyond reasonable doubt. No? And then, kapag mag-claim ka ng justifying circumstances or in, uh, justifying circumstances, yung burden of proof mag-shift doon sa accused. Siya ang magpapatunay ng justifying circumstances na ito kasi exonerating circumstance ito, defenses mo, ikaw ang unang magpapatunay nito kasi in effect, inamin mo na yung krimen. Pero sinasabi mo lang na justified yon. Circumstances that affect criminal liability So, punta na tayo sa exempting circumstances So, technically, one who acts by virtue of any of the exempting circumstances commits a crime Although, the complete absence of any of the conditions which constitutes free will or voluntariness of the act No criminal liability arises Hence, there is wanting in the agent of the crime any of the conditions which make the act voluntary or negligent There is, however, civil liability. So, ang kaibahan ng justifying sa exempting circumstances, sa exempting circumstances, ang civil liability ay ando doon. So, ang sinasabi mo lang dito sa exempting circumstances, walang voluntariness, walang negligence, or walang yung yung mga elemento ng felonies hindi complete freedom intelligence free will na mitigating circumstances these circumstances are based on the diminution of either the freedom of action intelligence or intent or on the lesser perversity of the offender so dahil dito ang parusa ay ilalagay sa minimum kasi ang parusang ipinapataw ay maaring minimum medium maximum kung may aggravating circumstance, doon ka sa maximum. Kapag wala, medium. Kapag may mitigating, doon ka sa minimum. Aggravating circumstances, these are based on the greater perversity of the offender. Perverse, mas, mas mademonyo, no? in the commission of the felony as shown by the motivating power itself. So, kung ano ang nag sa kanyang gawin yon Halimbawa, inggit, selos, and so on. The power, yung motive niya, the place of commission, saan niya ginawa, the means, paano niya ginawa, ways employed, mga pamamaraan niya, pa anong oras niya ginawa, and then personal circumstances of the offender. Halimbawa, kaano-ano niya yung biktima, no? and then personal circumstances of the offended party. So, these are things that should be taken into account in 
aggravating circumstances. Alternative circumstances naman, the basis of these alternative circumstances is the nature and effects of the crime and the other conditions attending its commission. So, yung aggravating and mitigating circumstances na discuss natin kanina ay maaaring magiging mitigating or aggravating depende sa sitwasyon. So, yun yung alternative. So, ang mga justifying circumstances sa Article 11, anyone who acts in defense of his personal rights provided that the following circumstances concur. So, self-defense. So, dapat merong unlawful aggression, reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel it, lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the person defending himself. So, dapat may unlawful aggression, tama ang ginamit na pamamaraan para mapigilan ang aggression na yun, and hindi hindi nagkaroon ng provocation on the part of the person defending himself. Anyone who acts in defense of the person of his spouse. So, ito ay defense of relatives. So, spouse, ascendants, legitimate, natural, or adopted brothers or sisters, or his relatives by affinity in the same degrees and those by consanguinity within the fourth civil degree. So, kailangan may unlawful aggression, reasonable necessity of the means he employed to re prevent or repel it, and then, in case the provocation was given by the person attacked, that the one making defense had no part therein. So, ito yung required sa defense of relatives. Halimbawa, naabutan mo yung nanay at nanay at ng nanay mo at ng uh, nanay ng kapitbahay ninyo na <clears throat> aaway at ang kapitbahay mo may hawak na baril na katutok sa nanay mo so binaril mo na yung kapitbahay mo kasi talagang ipuputok niya pipindutin niya na yung gatilyo so okay, hindi mo alam na ang nanay mo naman pala ang may kasalanan so basta hindi mo alam at wala kang participation sa provocation defense of relative yan. and then anyone who acts in defense of a person or rights of a stranger so defense of stranger so dapat may unlawful aggression pa rin reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent it and then the person defending be not induced by revenge, resentment or other evil motive so hindi ka dapat inudyok na <clears throat> paghihiganti, resentment or other evil motive halimbawa nakita mo yung kapitbahay mo at si Pedro nag-aaway, okay, kaaway mo rin si Pedro, binaril mo si Pedro, so meron ka, okay, hindi ka pwedeng mag-avail no justifying circumstances kasi ginawa mo yon for revenge or resentment. Any person who in order to avoid an evil or injury does an act which causes damage to another, provided the following requisites are present. So ito yung, okay, ito yung tinatawag natin na <clears throat> to avoid greater evil no? so the evil so to be avoided actually exist that the injury feared be greater than that done to avoid it there be no other practical and less harmful means of preventing it dito meron kang civil liability kasi nakinabang ka doon sa naging result nun so ito ang isa sa mga ito yung provision lang na is <clears throat> tulad ng sinabi walang civil liability pero pagdating dito meron any person who acts in fulfillment of a duty or in the lawful exercise of a right or office any person who acts in obedience to a lawful order issued by a superior for some lawful purpose a lawful aggression the act must be unjustified and sufficient to impair one's life, limb or right so dapat sapat siya para manganib din ang buhay mo at Okay. Unlawful aggression is equivalent to assault or at least threatened assault of an immediate and imminent kind. So, peril to one's life, limb, or right. Retaliation is not self-defense. The rule now is stand ground when in the right. So, defense of property or home or rights are some of those rights which you have the right to defend. Unlawful aggression, reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel it, lack of sufficient provocation on the one Defending had no part in provocation, not induced by, etc. So these are the requisites of self-defense, defense of relatives, defense of strangers. Justifying circumstances, so papasok na dito yung battered woman syndrome as provided in Republic Act 9262. So it, battered woman syndrome may be a valid defense if all the elements are present. Battered woman is a woman who repeatedly who is repeatedly subjected to any forceful physical or psychological behavior by 
a man in order to coerce her to do something he wants her to do without concern for her rights. So, yan yung battered woman. Ang um, battered woman syndrome ay characterized by the so-called cycle of violence which has three phases. So, tension building phase, the acute battering incident, and the tranquil, loving, or at least non-violent phase. In the first place, minor battering occurs, which would be verbal or slight abuse of another form of hosti hostile behavior. In the second phase, brutality, destructiveness, and sometimes death occurs. In the last phase, the couple experience profound relief. Battered women exhibit common personality traits such as low self-esteem, traditional beliefs about the home, the family, and the female sex role, emotional dependence upon the dominant male, the tendency to accept responsibility for the batterer's actions, and false hopes that the relationship will improve. Exempting circumstances, these are non-imputability. These are grounds for exemption from punishment because there is one thing in the agent of the crime any of the conditions which make the act voluntary or negligent. The basis of the exemption from punishment is on the complete absence of intelligence, freedom of action, or intent, or on the absence of negligence on the part of the accused. Under the revised penal code, a person must act with malice or negligence to be criminally liable. One who acts without intelligence, freedom of action, or intent does not act with malice. On the other hand, one who acts without intelligence, freedom of action, or fault does not act with negligence. So, ito yung mga requirements para ma-avail natin yung exempting circumstances na ito. Kasi kung kulang ang, ang elements na yon, yung element of malice or negligence, so magkakaroon ng exempting circumstances. Halimbawa, pinatay mo ang kapitbahay mo dahil nakatutok din ang baril ng hold upper sa iyo at sinasabi ng hold upper na kung hindi mo barilin ang kapitbahay mo ay babarilin niya ang anak mo na hawak-hawak niya so that is covered by the exempting circumstances kasi wala ka ng freedom to choose syempre always pipiliin mo yung safety ng anak mo kaysa sa safety ng kapitbahay or safety mo kaysa sa safety ng iba the following are exempting circumstances. Imbecility. Itong imbecility na ito, yung sira ulo. No? Ah, hindi. Kulang-kulang. Sinto-sinto. Yung utak niya, below 9 years old ang pag-iisip. Insanity, uh, sira ulo. No? So, ang insanity kasi merong pabugso-bugso lang. May lucid interval. So, kapag ginawa during lucid interval ang krimen, may pananagutan. A person below 15 o 15 years old, as provided by RA 9344 or the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Law. A person above 15 but below 18 who acted without discernment. Accident. <coughs> Okay, sa accident, meron kang civil liability. Who, a person who acted under the compulsion of irresistible force. A person who acted under the impulse of uncontrollable fear of an equal or greater injury. A person who fails to perform an act due to some lawful or insuperable cause. Na? So, yung mga exempting circumstances na ito ay magre-resulta sa <clears throat> non-imposition of penalty. Kasi nga, kulang ang elemento ng felony. Ang imbecile is a person who, while advanced in age, has a mental development comparable to that of children 2 and 7 years of age. So, masyadong mahina ang kanilang mental development. Insanity exists when there is a complete deprivation of intelligence in committing the act that is the accused is deprived of reason. He's, he acts without the least discernment because there is a complete absence of the power to discern or that there is total deprivation of freedom of the will. Halimbawa, si X, pinatay niya si Y. Karong maldumal na pagpatay kay Y. Pero pagkatapos niyang gawin yon ay naging siraulo siya. May criminal liability ba siya? Meron. So, kasi hindi naman siya siraulo nung ginawa niya yon Yung insanity niya nangyari after. Pero... Although kakasuhan siya, <clears throat> maaaring confined siya sa mental hospital at ang criminal case niya ay magiging pending lang hanggang hindi pa siya fit to stand trial. 
the age of absolute irresponsibility 15 years and below the age of cons conditional irresponsibility 15 years and one day to 18 years age of full responsibility 18 years or over to 70 years age of mitigated responsibility 15 years and one day to 18 the offended party or the offender acting with discernment and over 70 years of age so pag 70 years 70 years plus one day ka na mitigated na yan. A child in conflict with the law is a person who at the time of the commission of the offense is below 18 years but not less than 15 and one day old. Discernment means the capacity of the, of the child at the time of the commission of the offense to understand the differences between right and wrong and the consequences of the wrongful act. An accident is something that happens outside the sway of our will and although it comes about through some act of our will lies beyond the bounds of humanly foreseeable consequences so accident absolutory causes are those where they are committed is a crime but for reasons of public policy and sentiment there is no penalty imposed so absolutory causes spontaneous desistance of a person who commenced the commission of a felony before he could perform all the acts of execution accessories who are exempt from criminal liability so ito yung mga absolutory causes na absolve ka napapawalang sala those with respect to their spouses attendants descendants legitimate natural or adopted brothers and sisters or relatives by affinity within the same degrees except by profiting themselves or assisting the offenders to profit by the effects of the crime so wala silang pananagutan liban na lang doon sa kapag nag-assist sila para makinabang death or physical injuries inflicted under exceptional circumstances ito yung nahuli mo yung halimbawa asawa mo na may kasex na iba in the act no? crimes of death, swindling or malicious mischief by spouses ascendants etc with those spouses in respect to the property of deceased husband and so on so absolutory causes entrapment Absolutory causes, ways and means are resorted to for the purpose of trapping and capturing the lawbreaker in the execution of a criminal plan. Pero pagdating sa instigation, ang instigator practically induces the would-be accused into the commission of the offense and himself becomes a co-principal. So may pananagutan na siya. The following are complete defenses in criminal cases. Any of the essential elements of the crime charge is not proved by the prosecution and the elements proved do not constitute an offense. So lack of evidence the, ac the accused falls under any of the justifying circumstances the case of the accused falls under any of the exempting circumstances the case is covered by any of the absolutory causes guilt of the accused not established beyond reasonable doubt prescription of crimes pardoned by the offended party before the institution of criminal action in crimes against chastity so absolutory causes this spontaneous desistance during attempted stage and no crime is yet committed light felony is only attempted or frustrated is and is not a crime against persons or property the accessory is a relative of the principal legal grounds for arbitrary detention so ito yung mga absolutory you know crime of theft swindling etc against a relative slight or less serious physical injuries Ito yung spouse or daughter in the act of sex on another man, marriage of the offender with the offended party in crimes of rape, abduction, seduction, or acts of lasciviousness. Mitigating circumstances are those, if present in the commission of the crime, do not entirely free the actor from criminal liability but serve to reduce the penalty. So, mitigating circumstances are based on the diminution of either freedom of action, intelligence, or intent, or the lesser perversity of the offender. So, mitigating, bababa ang parusa. Bababa, pero hindi, do, hindi do, bababa doon sa minimum. Kasi nga, ang parusa na ipapataw ay may tatlong periods. Minimum, medium, maximum. So, kapag may mitigating, minimum ang penalty. Ordinary mitigating is susceptible of being offset by any aggravating circumstance while privileged mitigating cannot be offset by aggravating circumstances. Ordinary mitigating if not offset by an aggravating circumstance, produces only the effect of applying the penalty provided by law for the crime in its minimum period in case of divisible penalty, whereas privilege mitigating produces the effect of imposing upon the offender the penalty lower by 1 to 2 degrees than that provided by law for the crime. So, bababa pa doon sa 1 or 2 degrees. 
Diversion refers to an alternative child-appropriate process of determining the responsibility and treatment of a child in conflict with the law on the basis of his or her social, cultural, economic, psychological, or educational background without resulting to formal court proceedings. By provocation is understood as any unjust or improper conduct or act of the offended party capable of exciting, inciting, or irritating anyone. So ito yung provocation in ujok no ginagatungan mo pa yung isang tao. Mass psychology and appeal to spray decor. So ang pagpronounce natin, spray decor. No? Ito yung mass psychology is similar to passion or obfuscation yung yung nag halimbawa sa kaso ng ng rumble okay yung tumultuous fray so nagkaroon ng mass psychology may mga tao na nag nag cheer na tuloy pa gawin pa and so on Mitigating circumstances, those justify and exempting circumstances when all the requisites necessary to satisfy the act or to exempt from criminal liability in their respective cases are not attended. So, hindi complete that the offender is under 18 of age or over 70 years. In the case of the minor, he shall be proceeded against in accordance with the provisions of Article 80 that the offender had no intention to commit so grave a wrong than that commit, as that committed. Ito yung preter intentionem natin kanina that the sufficient pro provocation or threat on the part of the offended party immediately preceded the ako. Nagud may merong threat or provocation doon sa naging biktima that the act was committed in the immediate vindication of a grave offense to the one committing the felony. So, ipinaghiganti niya lang retaliation doon sa naunang ginawa ng biktima sa kanyang pamilya, etc. That the act of having acted upon an impulse so powerful as naturally to have produced passion or obfuscation. So, sobrang tindi ng damdamin. That the offender has voluntarily surrendered himself to a person in authority of, or his agents, or that he had voluntarily confessed his guilt before the court prior to the presentation of the evidence for the prosecution. So, kapag nang voluntary surrender ka or voluntary plea of guilt, magkakaroon ka ng mitigating circumstance. That the offender is deaf and dumb, blind, or otherwise suffering from some physical defect which restricts his means of actions, defense, or communication with his fellow being. Such illness of the offender as would diminish the exercise of the willpower of the offender without, however, depriving him of the consciousness of his acts. Any other circumstances of a similar nature and analogous to those above mentioned. So, ito yung mga mitigating circumstances natin. So, magiging mas mababa yung parusa. And then, ang aggravating circumstances naman natin, Ito, yung, that advantage be taken by the offender of his public position. Nag-take advantage sa kanyang, na kanyang position. That the crime be committed in contempt of or with insult of public authorities. Kahit na mayroong mga persons in authority, ginawa mo pa rin. That the act be committed with insult or disregard or respect due to the offended party on account of his rank, age, sex, or that it be committed in the dwelling of the offended party if the latter has not given provocation. So, doon mo pag ginawa mismo sa bahay ng offended party ang crime. So, may aggravating circumstances na yun. Disregard na kanya dwelling. That the act be committed with abuse of confidence or obvious ungratefulness. Bisita ka ni Pedro pero nagawa mo pang nakawan si Pedro. That the crime be committed in the palace of the chief executive or in his presence or the public authorities are engaged in the discharge of their duties or in a place dedicated to religious worship. So, ginawa mo yung crime sa presence ng president or mga public officials na doing public duties or doon sa simbahan mismo. That the crime be committed in the night time sa gabi mo ginawa or an inhabited place or by a band okay, para ma-facilitate ang commission of the crime. Sinadya mong gawin yun para mapadali. So, kapag more than three so, ang malefactors, armed malefactors okay, it, should ha it will be considered as committed by a band. So, sa, ma sa band, apat at least ang gumawa. That the crime be committed on the occasion of conflagration, shipwreck, earthquake, epidemic, or other calam calamity or misfortune. Halimbawa, sunog, bagyo, etc. That the earthquake. So, that the crime be committed with the aid of armed men or persons to ensure or afford impunity. So, mga armadong tao kang 
<coughs> kasama the accused is recidivist pa ulit ulit na lang no a recidivist is one at the time of the trial for one crime shall have been previously convicted by final judgment of another crime embracing the same title of the RPC so dapat the same title ng RPC di ba ang RPC natin iba ito bang title so crimes against national security and the law of nation crimes against the fundamental law of the state crimes against persons crimes against honor and crimes against chastity crimes against property okay that the offender has been previously punished by an offense to which the law attaches an equal or greater penalty for two or more crimes which it attaches a lighter penalty so ito quasi recidivism that the crime be committed with evident premeditation pinagplanuhan that a crime be committed by means of inundation guma ginamit ang to ano baha flood sunog lason explosion mga sinira yung barko sinira ang tren okay so these are crimes which entail great waste and ruin so aggravating that the, that craft fraud or disguise be employed so nagpanggap na no? That advantage be taken of superior strength or means be employed to weaken the defense. So, tinak advantage mo, superiority in strength mo. Nalimbawa, sampo kayo, isa lang ang kalaban. That the act be committed with treachery. Patraidor. So, patraidor ang isang krimen kapag sinigurado mo na hindi makapagante o hindi makapaghanda ang iyong biktima. That the means be employed or circumstances brought about which add ignominy to the natural effects of the act. So, may mga ginawa ka pa na dagdagdag sa karumaldumal na condition ng krimen na ginawa mo. Halimbawa, ni-rape ni ex si, Pedro, si Petra doon pa sa harapan ng mga anak niya at asawa. So, that's adding ignominy. That the crime be committed after an unlawful entry. Sa pilitan kang pumasok sa bahay nila. That as a means for the commission of a crime, a wall, roof, door, window be broken. So, illegal entry or unlawful in entry. There is unlawful entry when an entrance is effected by way not intended for the purpose. Unlawful entry. That the crime be committed with the aid of persons under 50, gumamit ka ng midoridad, na motorized watercraft, etc. That the wrong done in the commission of the crime be deliberately augmented by causing other wrong not necessary for its commission. Dinagdagan mo pa yung <clears throat> halimbawa, pinadagdagan mo pa ang pasakit sa biktima. That the offender party in his dwelling gave sufficient and immediate provocation to the offender but the provocation contemplated as three requisites. It must be given in his dwelling, it must be sufficient, it must be immediate. Okay, so dwelling hindi aggravating kung okay, yung offended party mismo ang nag -udyok. When both the offender and the offended party are occupants of the same dwelling and when the dwelling is inherent in the crime such as in robbery and trespass to dwelling. So, on dwelling, hindi mo gagamitin yan sa robbery or trespass to dwelling as aggravating kasi inherent na yan siya. Kung magkasambahay kayo, hindi mo na magagamit ang dwelling. So, kapag present ang attendant circumstances, yung aggravating circumstances na ito, yung penalty will be imposed in its maximum. Kasi nga, di ba, minimum, medium, maximum. So, ito ay dahil sa greater perversity ng offender as shown by the motivating power, the place of the commission, the means and ways employed, the time, the personal circumstances of the offender and the offended party. Kinds of aggravating circumstances, meron tayong generic, specific. So, generally, apply to all, dwelling, nighttime, recidivism, generic, specific, applicable only to particular crimes like ignominy in crimes against chastity or cruelty and treachery in crimes against persons or concubinage qualifying those who change the nature of the crime halimbawa alevusha or treachery or evident premeditation qualifies the killing of a person to murder na nagiging murder ang homicide inherent necess those that must of necessity accompany the commission of the crime. So, evident premeditation is inherent in robbery, theft, stuff, adultery, and concubinage. Tulad na banggit natin kanina. So, both qualifying and aggravating circumstances must be alleged in the information or complaint. Otherwise, they will not be appreciated even if proved in the trial. So, dapat nakasaad ito sa information or sa complaint na isasampa. Kasi kapag naaray ng isang akusado doon sa complaint or information na hindi nakalagay ang mga qualifying circumstances na ito hindi siya pwedeng ma-convict 
sa mas mataas na krimen na kung saan hindi nakasaad ang mga qualifying or aggravating circumstances na kailangan. Illegal possession of firearms. So, qualifying circumstance for 1 to RA 24924. Whenever more than three armed malefactors shall have acted together in the commission of an offense, it shall be deemed to have been committed by a band. No, nabanggit na natin yung kanina. A recidivist is one who at the time of the trial for one crime shall have previously been convicted by final judgment of another crime embracing the same title of the revised penal code. Nabanggit na rin yan natin kanina. And then, habitual delinquent is when a person with a within a period of 10 years from the date of his release or last conviction of the crimes of serious or less serious physical injuries, robbery, theft, theft, or falsification is found guilty of any of said crimes as a th at a third time or oftener. So, bantayan lang ninyo yung crimes na kasama doon. No? So, serious or less serious physical injuries, robbery, theft, theft, or falsification. So, habitual delinquent. Quasi-recidivism, any person who shall commit a felony after having been convicted by final judgment before beginning to serve such sentence or while serving the same shall be punished by the maximum so yun yung quasi-recidivism so gumawa ka ulit ng felony previously na convict ka na by final judgment okay and then magsiserve ka pa lang nun or habang nagsiserve ka okay so yun ay quasi-recidivism so, the four forms of repetition are recidivism, reiteration or habituality, multi-recidivism or habitual delinquency, quasi-recidivism. So, yung mga definitions na banggit na natin kanina yan. Evident premeditation, craft disguise. So, evident premeditation implies a deliberate planning of the act before executing it. So, may oras ka pang magplano, may oras ka pang magbago ang isip. Craft involves intellectual trickery and cunning on the part of the accused. Disguise, resorting to any device to conceal identity. And then, treachery. Okay, so sinabi natin sa treachery kanina, sinisigurado mo yung paggawa ng krimen ng walang danger sa iyong sarili at hindi makapaghiganti o makapaghanda yung biktima. Yan ay treachery or alivusha. Ang cruelty naman ay kapag ang accused or ang culprit nag enjoy pa siya o natutuwa na makita ang biktima niya na naghihirap ng dahan-dahan at dinadagdagan pa niya yung physical pain sa paggawa ng krimen. Halimbawa, habang habang pinapatay mo ay binabalatan mo pa ang biktima. And then alternative circumstances, yung relationship, intoxication, degree of instruction or education of the offender, maaari siya maging mitigating or aggravating depende sa sitwasyon. Those which must be taken into consideration as aggravating Mitigating according to the nature and effects of the crime and other conditions attending its commission. So, alternative circumstances of relationship may be considered when the offended party is the spouse, ascendant, descendant, legitimate, natural, or adopted brother or sister, or relative by affinity in the same degree of the offender. The relationship of a step stepfather and stepmother and stepson or stepdaughter is included by analogy as similar to that of ascendant and descendant. The relationship of adopted parent and adopted child is also similar to that of ascendant and descendant. But the relationship of uncle and niece is not covered by any of the relationships mentioned. Relationship is mitigating in the crimes of robbery, usurpation, fraudulent insolvency, arson. So crimes against property mitigating ang relationship pero pagdating doon sa halimbawa sa rape okay yun ay aggravating na in view of the provision of article 332 when the crime committed is theft swindling or is stuff or malicious mischief relationship is exempting okay aggravating siya in crimes against persons or where the offended party is a relative of a higher degree than that the offender or when the offender and the offended party are relatives of the same level as killing a brother, a half-brother, adopted brother. But when the offense committed is less serious physical injuries, slight physical in injuries, relationship is a mitigating circumstance. So, mitigating lang siya in this case. 
relationship is mitigating and trespass to dwelling. Okay, so S believing his wife to be in his father-in-law's house attempted to force an entry therein. The relationship is a mitigating circumstances. Relationship is neither mitigating or aggravating when relationship is an element of the offense such as in parricide, adultery, and concubinage. In crimes against chastity like like acts of lasciviousness, relationship is aggravating, and rape such is also aggravating. The intoxication of the offender shall be taken into consideration as mitigating circumstance when the offender has committed a felony in a state of intoxication if the same is not habitual or not subsequent to the plan to commit said felony. At the time of the commission of the criminal act, he has taken such quantity of alcoholic drinks as to blur his reason and deprive of him of certain degree of control and that such intoxication is not habitual or subsequent to the plan to commit the felony so that will be mitigating. When the intoxication is habitual or intentional or when it is intentional or subsequent to the plan to commit the crime that is, ha that is aggravating. A habitual drunkard so that is Okay, one given to intoxication by excessive use of intoxicating drinks, the habit should be actual and confirmed. It is unnecessary that it be a matter of daily occurrence. So, habit while drunk are aggravating. Low degree of instruction and education or lack of it is generally mitigating. High degree of instruction and education is aggravating when the offender avails himself of his learning to commit the crime. So, degree of instruction or education aggravating or mitigating depends on the situation. Nighttime may be appreciated as an aggravating circumstance in the following instances. So, when it facilitated the commission of the crime, talagang hinintay na gumabi, you take advantage of the darkness to hide the crime. Nighttime is not aggravating even if committed at nighttime in the following instances. When the crime was the result of succession of acts which took place between the period of 2 hours, 5 o'clock to 7 p.m. The treachery occurred with night time in the commission of the crime because night time is absorbed in treachery. When the meeting between the offender and the offended party at night time is casual and the idea of committing the crime came into the mind of the offender only at that time. So, hindi sinadya nagtagpo. Dwelling is an aggravating circumstance when the crime is committed in the dwelling of the offended party. When the offender was welcomed into the home of the offended party and the offender committed the crime against the latter, there was abuse of confidence. Or, when the offender forced his way into the dwelling of the offended party to commit the crime therein, there was a violation of the sanctity of the home. Degree of instruction is aggravating when the offender availed himself or took advantage of it in committing the crime. X, a doctor, using his knowledge, prepared certain kind of poison to kill Y in such a way as to avoid detection. That is aggravating. A lawyer, seriously injured B, A's high degree of instruction cannot be considered as aggravating. So, hindi naman kasi necessary ang pagiging lawyer mo doon sa crime na ginawa. So, thank you very much. Medyo mahaba-haba yan, pero tiyagaan lang. We will have the part 2 for the remaining topics. Study hard reach for your dream and stay safe.